In this tutorial, we're going to cover advanced text wrapping in InDesign. Let's go ahead and start in InDesign. Let's go File, New, and start a new document. Let's go ahead, change it to inches, and 8.5 by 11 is fine. And we can go ahead and make it portrait. We only need one page for what we're doing today. And go ahead and push Create. So one of the first things we want to do is create some text that we can add our drop cap to. So I'm going to grab my text tool and draw a box. I'm going to hit my right click and do my fill with placeholder text. I want my first letter to be a Q because I want to make that drop cap into a Q. So I'm going to go ahead and change that out. First thing we're going to do is highlight this first letter. We're going to go ahead and open our window type in tables. We want to grab the one called paragraph. We want to go ahead and go to this drop cap right here at the bottom, fourth one down. And I want to make it really obnoxious, so I'm going to drop it like 15. So it's really, really large. So let's play with this a little bit more. Next thing we're going to do is go to window, type in tables, and we want to grab the one called story. And we want to turn optical margin alignment on. And it kind of readjusts things for us just a little bit, makes it a little bit cleaner. Now we're going to go ahead and close that one. Let's go to Window, Type in Tables, and grab Character this time. And in Character, we want to go ahead and increase our kerning value to about 30. And our kerning value, if you look right underneath, you can see you get your amounts. You get your hints right here. So let's go ahead and take it to 30. Oh, I need to change it to make sure nothing's selected. And then I'll take it to 30. Oh goodness. Way too much. There you go. Alright. I can go ahead and highlight my, my drop cap. I'm then going to go to the bottom corner of my paragraph ma panel, so it's right here. And I'm going to hit my align to baseline grid and kind of rechange re those a little bit. Could be too big, could be something you don't like. I'm going to go ahead and stick with it for now. Um, or you can do. What else can you do? Got your base. I'm going to turn this one off. And right here. I've got a little bit of space after. I've got a little few different things I can play with. I'm going to go ahead and not turn my baseline shift on just because it made it a little bit too big. All right, so then I could go to my swatches and decide to make this a new color. Remember, you can go to on swatches, go here to new color swatch, and you can choose any kind of color. I'm going to go ahead and grab a Pantone color because those are already pre-mixed for us. I'm going to choose, let's choose a green and say OK. So now I can hit my fill right here. Grab my text tool, highlight it. Instead of black, I want it to be that green. All right, so that's, that's something, but we can make it even better. So let's go ahead, highlight our letter, and go to Type, and Create Outlines. What's that going to do is going to change this from a letter into a frame. I can see it's a frame if I go to my fill now and turn it into none. Should turn into no color. Clearly, it's not going to behave for me today. Now I can do it. Now I can turn it into no color. All right. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add that image. So I can right click on my on my frame. I want to go ahead and choose content, which is halfway down. And we want to make it a graphic. So notice we got those cross lines. Now I'm going to go to file and place. And I'm going to go ahead and choose one of my pictures. I chose a couple from Pixabay earlier. I'm going to go ahead and grab these peacock feathers and put open. And now I've got my peacock feathers in there. I can take my content grabber, my donut, 
and I can adjust how those peacock feathers are appearing in my image. All right, so let's do one more thing. Let's grab the text wrap. Let's go to Window and Text Wrap. And let's go ahead and wrap a little bit closer around my image. So I hit my wrap around image. I'm going to look at detect edges. Don't love that one as much. I'm going to make sure I'm on my image itself. So if I do bounding box, it's a little bit different. Let's go ahead and detect edges. So what I can do is grab my direct selection tool, click on here. I can always readjust the graphic itself by clicking inside the graphic. And let's go ahead and add a little bit of inset spacing. So that is a way to make a fancy drop cap for one of your, I must include inside edges, uh, for one of your stories or something in your publication.